Welcome to our YouTube channel. As you take time to listen to God's word today with us, we believe that your faith will be strengthened up each day and we hope that this sermon will be a blessing to you as well as your family. Last week, we uh, I spoke on this title. It's back. What was the title? What was the title? Nobody remembers the title. The series title I already said. What was the title? Kingdom Foundation? That's the, that's the NGO that we run, guys. <laughs> Kingdom Family? That was not the title. That was one of my points. Dream Home is the name of the series. That was not my sermon title. Looks like I need to preach my sermon all over again. One plus one equal to? That was the sermon title. Nobody's writing these things down. Maybe I should, you know. Okay, this is the sermon title, all right? <laughs> one plus one equals to one. And I know if you do a simple math, you know that it is not one according to math. And we looked at how God has brought two people together. When God adds a man and a woman, they become one flesh, right? So in, in marriage, in, in kingdom principles, according to God, when God brings two people together, they do not become two, but they become one. So as we continue in that, uh, today we are going to look at the three aspects in which God is calling a, a, a spiritual family or a Bible-centered marriage to be. And I'm going to teach you three important things of oneness. Okay? Are you ready, church? For those of you who are not yet married, this is great news for you because you know how to start. Amen? Okay. I hope you're all excited. Why, are, why is nobody excited about this? God help me. Okay. One plus one equals to one physically. When God brings two people together, God is bringing those people, first he's bringing them what? Physically. How many of you have had feelings on another girl? Hey, Shaban. This is why you shouldn't put your hand before I finish my sentence, my friend. How many of you have got feelings on a girl? Oh. <laughs> but you have feelings. Okay, you're not taking it back. Good, good one, good one. I'm glad you do have feelings on a girl. Okay. It's normal. It's very normal. If you don't go to a doctor or get yourself checked. Okay. So one plus one equal to one. God brings persons together first physically. When you are attracted to somebody, don't you ever come and tell me first, the Lord showed me a Bible verse. No, he didn't. The Lord, an angel came from heaven and the Holy Spirit just stirred up my heart to, to go and get her number. No, 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 no. What first worked was your hormones. Everybody say, I thank God for my Ah, that's natural. God created that as a natural reaction for a person. It is not sin to respond to how you feel as long as how you feel is biblical. Amen? If we act on all our feelings, all our feelings is not going to end up well. Are you, are you with me? When we act on everything, because that's why there is a phrase that says, follow your heart. God says, don't follow your heart, follow me. The world says, do what makes you feel right. Can you imagine if everybody did what makes them feel right? There is no just and there is no wrong. Everything seems to be just according to their own justification, right? I felt it, so I did it. To me, it was right. To you, it might not be right. You with me so far? So we are not called to live a life based on just human emotions, but at the same time, we don't have to ignore it 
Okay? Don't try to spiritualize everything. God brings two people together first physically. One has to be attracted to another physically first. That is natural. That is very natural. So you see in Genesis 2, 7 says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So physical intimacy is something that God has created. In Genesis chapter 1, verse uh, 26 and 27, we can see that God made man in his image. Nothing apart from his image, God made us in his image. Last week, I taught you the triangle, right? You all remember the triangle? The Trinitarian image of God is also on the man. We are also created to have a Trinitarian relationship. We are supposed to have a relationship with God. Even though you are attracted to a woman, let that woman be attracted to God more than she's attracted to you. Are you with me? Let the man be attracted to God more than she's attracted to you. So in a marriage relationship, pray that God blesses you with a husband. Pray that God blesses you with a wife who loves God more than he loves you. Because if he can love God more than he loves you, then your marriage, your relationship is safe. Everybody say amen. The moment we make it about us and our love alone, and we lean on to the strength of the physical nature or our romantic skills to keep something alive. If single people, if you talk to married couples here, they tell that yes, romance is there. Some might say we are, we are working on the romantic part, you know, all those kinds of things. But everybody will say that all those butterfly effects that you had in the beginning, they all fade away. They all fade away. The reason being that it's when you buy something new, when you buy a new car, right? Let's, let's forget relationship. When you buy a new car, you always say, I am not going to let a single scratch come on this car. I will wipe it every day. I will clean it every day. I will do this every day. And then one year later, you look at the car. You know how the song goes, count your blessings, name them one by one. Ade Madri, you can sing, count the scratches, name them. <laughs> count all the dents and... We make these things out of excitement of our attachment for newness to new things. That will never happen. Some single part people might be thinking, it might have happened to you. It might never happen to me. <laughs> this is the nature of our life. Because we cannot hold on to a newness feeling for long because nothing stays new. Because our human mind, when it gets to a, used to a pattern, we settle to the pattern. But God has called us to keep things fresh and revived because His grace is new every day. If God's grace is new every day, then your relationship, whether be it friendship, whether be it marriage, whether be it uh, you know, within the church family, whoever that you are connected to in any form of human relationship, whether it's your sons and daughters, whether it's your father and mother, do things biblically and those things will revive your relationship. And if you have this Trinitarian image of relationship, Whatever relationship that you have, you can have this Trinitarian image. Your relationship will stay fresh. Amen? Amen? How many of you want to experience freshness in all your relationships in life? It is God's freshness. And because it will be biblical in Jesus' name. Amen? So physical intimacy is designed by God. And it's designed for us to happen in the context of marriage in the context of marriage that is why the in the context of marriage one man one woman coming together as one flesh physically 
is a spiritual act, not a lustful act. Anything that happens outside that context of marriage is lust and not love. The devil often confuses us between these two words and we get pulled apart between these two things and sometimes we are too naive to think that it is love and we convince ourselves it is love but until you make a covenant relationship in marriage do not act on the physical nature the physical attractions don't act on it you might have feelings about it but don't act on it only act on it in the context of marriage see we live in a culture that is actually perverted in every nature i mean why would you show a half naked woman for a car advertisement why would you i mean there is even un, like for a bottle of water they have to bring in and they have objectified women in the society as something that men just prey upon that men just you know they just dominate over and if if they can be attracted to that they can be also attracted to the products and that is the way that is how everything is connected whatever pleases your eyes so you see marketing you see things outside you see other things everywhere there is this underlying uh, you know um um a story of selfishness selfishness because selfishness is the root cause of all sins so they want to think about yourself and what you feel and they have perverted the culture they have perverted the culture and they have made everything casual 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 friendship casually living together casually having relationship with anyone at any time at, and having physical intimacy at any time in any context and it's become so casual god has called us to cancel that culture in the name of jesus my friends church we are called to young people you are called to cancel that culture make decisions in with such conviction in your heart that i will stay righteous i'm not saying you will not be sinful yes you might you will have sinful thoughts as you are waiting in the context uh, to get married there are so many temptation that comes even before that while you're single and sometimes you fall into the trap of pornography fall into the trap of of you know um uh, messaging to random people and having casual conversations about things and there are so many new forms of 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 cyber bullying that's coming in and and cyber sins that are coming in there is there is so many upgraded sins so we can't really give a list of what is right and what is wrong but one thing i can say if you can just take the element of self away and keep christ centered life the choices that you make will always be will always help you to stay in the image of christ one thing you need to always ask yourself whatever choice that you're making whether it's a Uh, uh, it's a physical nature whether it's a material financial um you know decision or whether it's about your future or whether you're confused is this myself or is this right or wrong or somebody else gave me this advice whatever be the case ask one question and that one question solves everything and that one question is if i do this will it disrupt the image of god that is over my life that is that one question you need to ask will it disrupt the image of god over my life and if it will then is it worth it is it worth doing that is it worth making that decision is it worth living that lifestyle 1 plus 1 equal 1 physically for those who are married in a, in a in a marriage relationship keep it guard it because it is spiritual that oneness that physical oneness is a beautiful thing that god has given you 
that God has given you. Protect it. Guard it. And God will bless you. God will bless you. The second thing is, one plus one equals one, psychologically. You're called to be together physically. You're also called to be, to, to be one psychologically. Um, Dr. Billy Graham, uh, he used to say that he and his wife were happily incompatible. Billy Graham used to say, we are happily inca- incompatible. That's Billy Graham and Ruth Graham, one of the beautiful couples that I adore. And even my wife follows a lot of uh, their stuff. And we really adore. And, and as you know, he's gone to be with the Lord. But, you know, this is some, something that God has always put them together because they both are two different personalities. Two, this is Billy Graham we are talking about. Man of great valor and voice for the nations who preaches the gospel to millions. And Ruth, on the other hand, talks, likes to talk to only one person at a time. That's the beauty, that's the beauty of how God brings two people together. We are so different. This is not working. No, it is working because you're so different. And when you put Christ at the center of it, God becomes the axle and he keeps the wheel of marriage spinning because he's your joint factor. It is in him the covenant is made. You're not marrying trusting completely that person. You're marrying trusting the covenant that you are making with God and that covenant, you are trusting on that covenant And you believe that covenant will keep you safe together in good times, in bad times, when there is fever, when there is no money, when there is uh, enemies coming against us, when relatives push us away. Now you don't think of all these things on the day of your wedding when you're saying these vows. You just say good times and bad times. Hey, you, you got no idea what that means, right? And God puts the relationships to test, but then he never lets it go. So celebrate the things that you are different in. So that's what Billy Graham calls it. We are happily incompatible, which means that we have agreed. We have agreed upon our differences. But we have also agreed that we will never give up on each other. Somebody say amen. We have agreed upon our, so in other words, I am not going to convert my wife to become a preacher into millions, to preach to millions. I am called to do that. This is what Billy Graham is saying. I am called to do that, but she is not called to do that, and that is okay. But she is called to speak to one person at a time, and she speaks so softly. She speaks so quietly. She carries herself so gently. She might look, you know, small. But when Ruth Graham walks into the room, every man who serves with Billy Graham, they stand up because she was a powerful woman. Not because of her greatness in her voice, but because of the way she has always honored her husband and honored God by honoring her husband. I'll give a moment. They say in communication, pauses are good. It helps people think. Because everything that we do has to be God honoring. God honoring. Nothing else. Nothing else. So, many people give a reason. You know, uh, a lot of divorce cases, um, they say, oh, it doesn't work. We are just too different. What is your ground? Why are you why are you getting this making this decision? Why are you taking this action? Why are you getting divorced? We're just too different. And the lawyer says, Yeah, that's called marriage. <laughs> Say something new. No, we can't handle this. But hey, we as biblical people, God has given us two important principles 
to handle our differences while being together. It's possible to be together and still be different and still celebrate the uniqueness and togetherness. Pastor, I can't get this. You're saying you be different. Are you also saying you can be one? And you're also saying God appreciates this. It just does not work, Pastor. You've got no idea the trouble that we are going through. Are you ready to hear God's word out on this? Yes? Two oneness you need to bring into your family. Even in the midst of your differences, psychologically, if you need to be one, there are two important elements or factors that you need to clock in. You need to work on in your marriage for you to be psychologically one, even though you have two worldviews. What do I mean by that? You would have been, the husband would have been brought up in one particular family with particular values, with particular exposure. The woman would have been brought up in a different family with different background and different exposures and they've all would have gone ups and downs. And when those two people come together, they're not just bringing their romance in. Hello? It's not just a romance. I love you, baby. I love you, baby. I love you too, baby. Good night, baby. All that is good. I'm reminded of a story. Can I say this? Why are you all laughing? I didn't even tell the story yet. They're like, ah, story time. Pastor's going to say something. So when I was in Bible college, there was this lovely couple, and I hope they won't watch this. Um, there was this lovely couple. They were engaged, and this, but they were not married. Um, so, and uh, the, the, the girl... I'm trying not to say the name. <laughs> the girl, she was in a, of course, she's in a different accommodation. We are in the same campus. So she's in a different accommodation in a different block. And this guy was my roommate, right? And, and, and <laughs> now he knows. Uh, <laughs> and, and so I'm sharing a room with him. Uh, again, beautiful couple, lovely people. Uh, but one night, what happened was that, you know, uh, they were both talking in, in, in front of the block and they said goodnight to each other. And then after she goes back to her room, she always sends a message that's um, saying, good night, sleep well, sweet dreams and all that. But my lovely friend forgot to respond to that good night. You have no idea what a terrible sin that is in Europe. Or maybe in India even. I don't know. It's not the case for us, is it? So we just like, I was just like going to bed and, and this guy slept off. And 15 minutes later, I'm hearing a knock. Tuk, 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 tuk. I'm like, it's late. Who is knocking? This guy is sleeping. Is he expecting somebody? So I slowly, you know, go open the door. I'm like, hey, what happened? Of course, it's his fiance standing on the other side. Like, hey, what happened? Um, there's a small problem, she said. I was like, oh, what happened? Uh, well, your fiance is sleeping. Is there something that I can do? Uh, should I wake him up? And say, like, no, I just want to know why he did not say goodnight back in the text message. <laughs> I was like, you're kidding me. I was about to sleep too, lady. <laughs> That's all I want to know. And uh, now that I know that he is sleeping, I will go back to my room and sleep and I will talk to him next morning about this. <laughs> and I said, great, thank you. I, know, I closed the door and I went over to my roommate and I put a cross over his forehead. May the Lord bless you. <laughs> May his face shine upon you. May he help you, my friend. You rest in peace for now, but tomorrow morning is coming. <laughs> And the next day morning, he woke up and said, Hey, buddy, your fiancé came. I'm like, why? Well, did you check your text message? He said, I need to go for breakfast and meet her. And all that. He was like running and all those things. So, you know, that kind of connection, a sense of wanting to be deeply connected. All of you now reminiscing those days, you know. Ah, we also used to be like that only faster. <laughs> Don't go to flashback now. Come back here. You know, that sense of having that deep connection and, and physical bonding, that's all great. But then when you start 
the marriage and you start living together and you see the beautiful face every morning when you wake up and that's the only face that you see every morning when you wake up and all those things go on and six months down the line you start talking about making some important decisions and now you realize he has a different opinion about that and she has a different opinion about that you decide i will not say good night everything that was there in that depth of physical connection you want to pull away from that intimacy because intellectually you are not connecting are you with me here are you with me here so if you want psychological oneness you need to be intellectually one as well when i say intellectually one i'm not talking about your education oh intellectually one that's great I am a mechanical engineer I need to marry another mechanical engineer problem solved no it's not that you can you you can have all the degrees and put it all in your wedding invitation and you will still have differences you will have differences how can you have intellectual oneness are you ready for this keyword are you ready for it is the divine prophetic rhema word for your life everybody ready communication communication what do i mean by that just talk just talk yes you do that right you think you, every day i talk we used to talk every day all night we used to talk you are talking before but once you understood there was difference of opinion and now the moment you hang up when you were dating the moment you hang up call disconnected But when you're married, you can't hang up. Otherwise, you will be hung down. <laughs> There is no such options. That's why men always prefer to buy a comfortable couch. <laughs> Sofa bed is not cheap, kingla. In the furniture le, shop le, just in case, brother. <laughs> and and that communication the gap falls and then if that day it increases by hour the gap increases it increases by day then it then when you give that gap then everybody has opinions and if you talk about that communication problem to your loved ones your petified ones I hope you remember what I hope you know what I'm talking about and they love you and they also want to help you but they're not really helping you and they start taking sides and because they started taking sides now you have a different dialogue a different conversation a different script now you're preparing for the fight not knowing that you are not actually fighting against each other but you're fighting for each other This is what when you are two different people and you are having fights and you what you're longing for is a psychological oneness and intellectual oneness it is okay turn to the person sitting next to you look at them and tell them it's okay to fight with your husband and wife You don't have husband and wife just tell my future wife <laughs> and my future husband <laughs> it is okay let's get ready for a fight it's okay because what it symbolizes when it's totally quiet and you don't even want to fight about it you have given up that's what it's that's what it says that's what it communicates that it's it's almost dying but if you're still fighting the marriage is alive you are longing for intellectual oneness whether it's 10 years of marriage 15 years of marriage or 40 years of marriage you're still longing for psychological oneness and it's a way of communicating but one thing remember as you are fighting it's not against it's for each other everybody say amen men we have a lot of problem in this area sorry man up i have to speak the truth here because we bottle up things we have a list of expectations and sometimes we don't communicate our expectations really well and we don't say it out 
but yet we expect and our expectation is if she knows me she should know this how you didn't marry a prophetess although sometimes the gift of prophecy works in your spouse's lives they find everything but communicate because we are taught culturally that we need to handle ourselves we should not cry we should not say our feelings we should be stone hearted we should be like hitler whatever this is what the society is projecting over men but that's not what godly men is supposed to be like godly men was always god centered they cried before their god and they were transparent to their spouses look at abraham's life i will not go into details you go read it and you'll find for yourself the man was transparent he was genuine he was honest pastor but sometimes you know that communication gets us into problem but hey but it's good that it's a problem and you're talking about it because if it's not a problem and you're not talking about it it turns into a poison that kills your marriage kills your family kills your relationship with even with your children so as long as you are talking and you have problem good good because those problems can be solved those problems can be fixed but when you don't talk about it it turns into bitterness when it turns into bitterness it changes your shape your identity in christ when you change you leave the triangle you see how this is affecting your spiritual image so men i i i plead let's talk let's talk have date nights take them out talk god has blessed you with a car go for a drive and talk women on the other hand we know that you love to talk not all women are like that pastor you're just being so stereotypical right now what do i mean by that is that you are wired to express your emotion and it's easy to do that and men be like what do i how do i handle this because men are fixers women want to feel with you we want to fix you to fix things with us that's how god is wired as we think about tools and you think about emotions but then it's still beautiful together because it works god put it that way it works because there are times we need to feel and there are times we need to fix and that's how you build your dream home the dream is that we keep the image of god over our lives that's the dream that's the dream so how can you communicate how can you come into intellectual oneness number 1 one, learn to listen learn to listen communication is two way listening speaks more than speaking did you know that let me say that again listening speaks more than speaking it's nice that all the single people are like taking notes oh this is so good it's good it's true learn to listen be quick to listen and slow to speak It says in the bible in proverbs be quick to listen and don't be quick to listen to give a counter argument pastor said listening you pace pace i am taking points don't listen to speak listen to listen learn to handle yourself whether it's your anger whether it's your emotion learn to express it in a healthy way learn to avoid certain words you know the words that trigger your spouse you know them you know them and sometimes in anger you are so tempted to throw in that word and then you throw it in and all hells you know breaks loose and then you are speaking in tongues to each other (laughs) 
Avoid those words. Use words that build, not that breaks. And learn not to dwell in the past. Many people are still fighting over fights that they fought 20 years ago. I mean, World War I is over. World War II is also over. Many genocides have happened across the world and people are moving on. But yet, a marriage has not moved on. A couple has not moved on. Or a relationship has not moved on. And all these things happen because we try to remember and dwell in the past. I know exactly what you said about me. I know exactly what you said about my sister, my brother, my father. I know where you were standing. I know what shirt you were wearing. I know how many checked boxes were there in your shirt. We remember too much and we try to dwell there. And what the devil does is that he constantly reminds you of so many things from the past and tries to keep you dwell there so that you cannot look into the future because what God has for your future is much greater than whatever has happened in the past. That's a promise. Say it with me. What God has in the future for me is much greater and brighter than whatever dark things that has happened in the past. I speak healing over me. I speak deliverance over me. I speak redemption over me in the name of Jesus. Amen. May God cancel those lies that the devil has put in your head. God is a healer. God is a miracle working God. So don't dwell in the past. Intellectual oneness is important. Be careful what you say. Be careful how you say it. Be careful when you say it. And be careful why you say it. That helps you with your intellectual oneness. And eventually you see that both of you starting to merge psychologically. Because God is the one it brings. Because don't try to figure out the right and wrong through your opinions. When you talk, end of the day it comes to the word. Honey, we are fighting over this. But let's, can we have some wise counsel? Can we go to people who are godly people who can give us godly wisdom? Or can we sit together and learn together from God's word about this for a week? Let's put our fight to a pause. Just pause it. Let's read a scripture. Let's read passages. Let's read a book together. And, and then let's come back and discuss about this. Let's find out what the word says about this. How beautiful is that? God brings you together in intellectual oneness. And if you, another thing that you need is for you to be psychologically one, you should also have emotional oneness. It is not just intellectual oneness. That's one side. That's one coin. One side to the coin. The other side to the coin is emotional oneness. How can you have emotional oneness? Are you ready for the Rhema prophetic word for this? You're still processing intellectual oneness? Or should I take this to part three? I don't think I can do that. Are you ready for this? Yes. Yeah? In order to have emotional oneness, the key word is consideration. Consider one another. Consider one another. It's really, really important to consider one another. For intellectual oneness, communication is important. For emotional oneness, consideration is important. The husband should not think, I am the one who's been out all day doing all the hard work and carrying this family in the shoulder. And when I come in, I am expecting my wife to stand at the door with a cup of coffee and a lot of malligapu with all makeup on and like how I see in the serial or the cinema, a thorn. <laughs> and I want to take the coffee and drink it. Shamatha <laughs> potrkema. Besharkma copy. Wonderful copy. 
and then she should throw flowers as i walk into the house it shall never happen <laughs> if you have such a wife let me have a word with her <laughs> i'm joking relax we kind of have such an emotional build up right and then also you have the wife on the other side who has also gone through everything i have been giving baths to my child i have been doing this i am teaching his maths in the makkuk vera maths varadu andalu velaikku poitaar he is doing that he is doing this i told him to come at 6 he is coming at 9 all these things and the moment he walks in vandutiya po what do you want to eat ah you are always hungry only come come eat what is your dog or what emotional oneness is absent because there is no consideration there's no consideration be considerate of your husband and husband be considerate of your wife and do it at all times the reason is every person needs love the man might act all tough and you know stiff but you should look at him like a teddy bear with a six pack maybe or with no hair i don't know whichever teddy bear that you married look at him as a teddy bear all he needs is a hug everybody say hug make it a point that you hug him the moment you walk in walks into the house and men you make it a point that you go straight to your wife not to the bathroom <laughs> not to the dressing room don't go pick up the child and start playing with the child go straight to your wife and consider her recognize her tell her honey thank you for all that you have done can i take over from here and she will say hey no 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 you been working all day long what do you mean take over poi kulichtuvang i have got a meal for you are you sure yes come eat oh how sweet <laughs> <laughs> there is some side preachings happening here right now <laughs> i see a lot of kung fu this point hey for you hey this one for you <laughs> those who are single don't you ever think this will not happen to you <laughs> okay just write everything down even if it's not making sense every person needs to be loved they're just a big teddy bear with a lot of beard <laughs> but they need to be loved don't treat them rough and tough because they have been treated rough and tough all day long you have no idea how the boss would have spoken to that your man you would have no idea what kind of you know a rude customer that they dealt with or what kind of student that they had to deal with they had that outside they don't need that inside your home cancel that in jesus name everybody needs to be loved your woman she can be put down by many people and you don't be one of them husbands she needs to be elevated by you consider her love her and again every person needs to be respected 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 women thrive out of love and men thrive out of respect You want your man to change? Praise him. Praise him. Praise him for the things that he is still not done yet. It works. It works. Because men are wired to change in the atmosphere of honor and respect. The moment there is no honor and there's more moment there's no respect we have a switch off button and you will not even know that we have switched off and you will get another version of your husband that you think he is listening to you and all that but he's just switched off abdiya ma correct 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 ah correct 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 panira 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 okay 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 don't today it will not happen but when you start being disrespectful and dishonoring and always demeaning Oh you useless fellow you're good for nothing what good came out of you he's gone he switched off already 
Nothing is going to go past that because a man is not wired to respond to such disrespectful terms. The moment there is disrespect, what he does is that this is not me. This is not for me. I reject this. But he'll be there physically, but he's not there emotionally. And you don't have emotional oneness. And husbands, if you're going to always be dominating, raising your voice, talking down, and calling it tough love, and you're trying to show tough love, it's not going to work. Women are not called to receive or God did not wire them to receive such treatment they are wired to receive love speak gently your home is not your office go bring it I've been working all day and what is this that's not going to work change your tone be intentional about it if you're not used to it, oh, pastor's teaching is different culture. No, I'm not teaching different culture. I'm teaching you biblical culture. Change your tone. Be loving, be kind, be soft. And speak gently. And I know it's not possible all the time. Sometimes you are in a frustration and you raise your voice. At that time, wife, be understanding. This is why the word consideration is important. You gotta go deeper, to know what the matter really is. Be considerate of each other. Every person needs to feel appreciated. Every person feel, needs to be loved. Everybody needs to be respected. And every person needs to feel appreciated. And finally, one plus one equals one spiritually. Spiritually. You're one physically. You're one psychologically. In order to have psychological oneness, you need to have two things. What are they? Intellectual oneness and emotional oneness. In order to have intellectual oneness, you need to communicate. In order to have emotional oneness, you need to consider, be considerate. And finally, you have to be spiritually one. Spiritual oneness is key. When you don't have spiritual oneness, you cannot love your wife like Christ loved the church. If you want psychological oneness to work, it starts from the foundation of spiritual oneness. Ephesians 5.25 says, Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. There is no greater sacrifice than Christ's sacrifice for his bride, the church. So which means that we are called to sacrifice and be sacrificial in our marriage. 2 Corinthians 6.14 it says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness and unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? Many people have this question, can a believer marry an unbeliever? That very question in itself is contradictory because it is clear in this verse. We are not rejecting the person, but in order for you to thrive in your marriage, you got to have spiritual oneness. Without spiritual oneness, you will try to make it work, but it will not be God-centered marriage. There is working marriage and then there are thriving marriages. Do you want your marriage to be just functional or do you want to be something that is kingdom oriented? And if it's kingdom oriented, choose wisely. Love the person, share the gospel, but they don't need to be converted for the sake of you getting married to that person. And I'm saying this with all kindness and gentleness and from the Bible. And I'm not here to judge anybody. If you've already made such decision and, you, uh, and, and if you're watching this online and, and if you've already made such decision and you're going through that marriage, we are praying for you. God is with you. God still loves you. And you can still make it a God-centered marriage. It's not too late. As long as you both come together and sur surrender to one faith and one name and his name is Jesus. There is no other way. There's no other way. 
But if you are in a relationship and you're not yet married and you're considering that relationship and that person does not believe in the same God that you believe in or has the same faith that you have, he or she will make a great friend but not a covenant partner. Marriage is not just friendship. It's deeper than friendship. I know you can be best friends with your partner, but best friends can also break away. But it's deeper than best friends, friends or friendship. It is a covenant. Covenant is not a legal agreement. It is not a marriage certificate. Covenant comes from a relationship where he gives unlimited love, unlimited grace, unlimited empowerment, and everything unlimited. And that comes from the only one whose name is Jesus. And he's the source of all things unlimited. Every other source has an expiry date. So when you start a covenant relationship in marriage, how can you be bound in that covenant with the great I am? Because one plus one makes it. One plus one cannot have two faiths. It should have one faith. One faith. One faith. So my friends, if you're considering that, prayerfully make a decision to walk away from such relationships. Do it politely. Don't do it rudely, but be gentle. But take hold of your faith because it is your faith that will sustain you. Nothing else. The covenant that you have with God has to be on the foundation of your faith and that faith has to be one faith, one God, one spirit, one baptism, one church. Stand together in the oneness of God. God is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But all three in one. One. Spiritual oneness is so important. How do you build your dream home? Let's get this right first. Let's this start this first. You might know this by knowledge. But let's put it to practice. It's not going to happen over a year. It's not going to happen over 10 years, 20 years. But put it to work. Put it to work. Put it to work. Strive for a Bible-centered relationship. Thank you for listening to our sermon today. Hope it was a blessing for you as well as your family. If you would like to support our ministry, you can do so by visiting kingcitychurch.org forward slash give. And we will meet you next week with another inspiring sermon. God bless you.